Today's lecture is going to be on categorical variables. This corresponds to section 2.1 in the Lock 5 textbook. By the end of today's lecture, you should understand proportions and the difference between a sample proportion and a population proportion. You should also start to get um, some familiarity with the differences between a statistic and a parameter. You should be able to construct a frequency table, bar charts, and be able to calculate differences in proportions. So let's begin with an example. This example comes to us from the General Social Survey. So the General Social Survey is a survey that's conducted, um, I don't think it's conducted annually, um, but what it does is it gathers data on contemporary American society in order to monitor and explain trends and constants in attitudes, behaviors, and attributes. In 2018, data were collected on 2,348 American households. They were randomly selected and participation is voluntary. So as kind of a review, I would um, encourage you to maybe stop the video right now and see if you can answer these next two questions. What is the sample and what is the population? Do you believe that this method of sampling introduces any bias? So what would be the sample here? Well, the sample is the 2,348 American households that were part of this um, survey. And then the population would be all American households. Do you believe that this method of sampling introduces any bias? Well, we have a random sample, right? So they were selected randomly. So because they were selected randomly, there shouldn't be any sampling bias. There could be other forms of bias, of course, but not necessarily uh, sampling bias. One of the questions asked uh, the respondents about their happiness in their marriage. To this particular question, 992 uh, respondents who were married, so the other participants that were not married were not um, asked this question. The question was, taking things all together, how would you describe your marriage? Would you say that your marriage is very happy, pretty happy, or not too happy? What we're interested in doing is finding out the proportion of respondents who describe their marriage as very happy, as well as finding out if this proportion differs based on the biological sex of the respondent and the respondent's highest degree obtained. Thinking about this, do you believe that there could be any method bias here? Could there be any sort of bias that might occur here? Again, I'd give you a, a moment to sort of think about this. So I think there's a potential for there to be bias. And specifically, uh, depending on how this question was asked, there may be, uh, there may be somebody, or not, not how it was asked, but when the question was asked to somebody in their household. So for example, if I'm asked questions about um, the happiness in my marriage, but maybe my spouse is sitting in the room, maybe I'm not going to be as honest. And there could also be just even if my spouse is not in the room, there may be pressure for me to sort of lie or to have uh, project some sort of feeling that I believe that the, res that the person asking the survey would want me to say, right? People don't want to admit necessarily that they're unhappy in their marriage. So there could be biases that are introduced. <clears throat> But again, this is more review, thinking about the bias stuff. So what we can do is we can represent this data first and foremost as a frequency table. So a frequency table is shown here, and our responses to the question are that you could have said you were very happy, that you were pretty happy in your marriage, or that you were not too happy in your marriage. And so that's what we see in that first column there, the responses. And in that column on the, on the right, we see the frequency. So we see that 638 people said that they were very happy in their marriage, 324 said they were pretty happy, and 30 said they were not too happy. So using this frequency table, we can find the proportion of respondents that describe their marriage as very happy. So how do we do this? <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to take the number that are very happy, and then we're going to divide that by the total number of people who responded to that question. So if you scroll back to the uh, previous table or previous slide and look at that table, you'll see that 638 participants said that they were very happy in their marriage. 922 people responded to this question. So the proportion is just 638 divided by 922, which equals 0.64. So the proportion of uh, married respondents that describe their marriage as very happy is, is 0.64. So let's more formally define what a proportion is. So the proportion in a category 
is the number in the category divided by the total number. Okay, so I just showed you this with the proportion of people that were very happy in their marriage. We took the number that were happy, that's the, that's the category, the number that are happy. And then the total number is the total number of people who respond to that item. <clears throat> and a proportion always ranges between zero and one. This is important to understand um, because there's a lot of confusion between a proportion and a percentage. Now a pr proportion and a percent can move uh, our one to one in the fact that a proportion multiplied by 100 gives you a percent. So that is the difference between a proportion and a percent. Now if you're ever calculating a proportion and your proportion is greater than one or your proportion is less than zero, then you know you've done something wrong. And right away, that's a giveaway that you've done something wrong in your mathematics. I see it every semester that students will have proportions that are uh, greater than one. Uh, so if you have a value like that, that's kind of a, a sanity check to make sure that you've done your math correctly. So <clears throat> a proportion is also known as a relative frequency. And a table that consists of proportions is called a relative frequency table. Right? So I just showed you a frequency table, which is basically the, the counts um, for each particular category. And then a relative frequency table, rather than containing the counts, is going to contain the proportions or the relative frequencies. <clears throat> so I would encourage you to, look in, looking at this frequency table here, see if you can calculate the proportion of respondents that are pretty happy and not too happy, and then create a relative frequency table. So we know from looking at previously that the, the uh, proportion of participants who were very happy was 0.64. <clears throat> so if we were going to make this a relative frequency table, we could just add a column here. And then this number is going to be 0.64. So then how do we find it for the other two? Well, we're going to just take the total count in the category. So in this case, it would be 324. In this case, it would be 30. And we're going to divide it by the number of people who responded to this question, which was 922. 922. And then that's going to equal 0 0.35. And then this is going to equal 0 0.03. And within rounding, these should sum up to 1. Um, if they don't sum up to one, it's only because of rounding, right? But otherwise, these, these values should sum up to one. We see here that they are actually a little bit greater than one. They sum up to 1.02, and that's just because of rounding. Um, in my class, if you're not asked explicitly, I would always round to two decimal places. Sorry that my writing is so bad on the glass, but always round to two decimal places unless asked otherwise. <clears throat>